What's up you guys, welcome back. So today is gonna be a night look. This is typically what I would wear on a night out. I'm actually going out right now. I'm going to a bachelorette party, so this is perfect. So this type of style, plus how I'm pairing it with certain products, guarantees that I have a flawless look that's gonna last all night because it is going to be a long night. So if you guys like to see my definition of a perfect night out makeup, then keep on watching. So I already prepped the skin. I wanted to do a little concoction because you guys know I like to mix everything. So today I mixed in the Milk Hydro Primer with my Elysian Continuum. So I'm hoping like this is basically glue <laughs> for my makeup. Usually, I mean, they work really well on their own, but I wanted to see how they work together because this has a little bit more of like a tacky feel, whereas this gives more of that smoothing effect. So hopefully that works its magic. Another reason why I wanted to mix two is because currently right now it is 4.30 p.m. and dinner is at eight. I know I'm getting ready like way in advance, but I wanted to film a video, which is why it's so early. And then after dinner, we're going to a club for the bachelorette party. So I'm going to be gone for a very, very long time. So that's why I'm hoping that these two will just leave my face and my makeup looking flawless all night. We're gonna be working on the eyes first per usual. So I'm gonna be using my Too Faced Born This Way concealer in light beige. I self tanned last night, so I'm pretty dark today. I would say so. So for today's look, I'm gonna be doing a look that I already posted on my Instagram and you guys liked it. And of course I loved it too, but I didn't get to wear it out. So I thought this would be like the perfect opportunity to get to wear it out. For the eyeshadows, I'm thinking I'm gonna use these two. I know I use this one more heavily, but there's a color in this palette that I want to mix in with here. But these are the Natasha Denona palettes. This is the Mini Star and this is the Mini Sunset. So I'll be using more of this, but I'm gonna go into this one first. And I want to grab this little it's a very, very similar shades to what's in the other one, but it's a little bit lighter, so I think it's gonna work a little bit better for my transition. So I'm just gonna take my Smith 232. It's my big fluffy brush. I just washed these, and I love freshly washed brushes, but now it's about to get dirty again. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put this all through kind of the lid. I think I'm gonna go everywhere with this, to be honest. I'm just gonna make sure that this color is blown out all over the eye, focusing it more in the crease first, blowing it out, and then I'll just dab whatever is left right on the lid and just blend away. Now that we have that shade nicely blown out all over the lid, I'm gonna go now into the Sunset Palette and we're gonna go in with this shade right here, which is just like slightly warmer. So very, very similar to the first one, but this one's gonna be warmer and I'm gonna be using my Smith 247 brush, and I'm gonna focus this a little bit more heavy into the crease, and just really building up that crease depth, and then of course bringing it outwards because I do want that elongated shape because we're gonna be putting a little bit of a wing on. So just bringing it out, and of course if you don't like that elongated shape, just tuck it right into here. So now you can see that that shade really did warm up the eyes. I'm really trying to go for that super bronzy look. Now I'm gonna dig into this shade right here, which is a really warm brown, same brush, and just building in that same area. So now just keeping it tucked right into the crease. These mini eyeshadow palettes are seriously some of my favorite palettes that I own. I love Natasha Denona's eyeshadows, period, but I love that she gives these mini options because her shadows and her palettes are really, really, truly expensive. You're getting them, it's great quality, but not everybody could purchase that. And these are $25 and you you get a nice selection of color and it's great because it's not overwhelming either. So you can really get like that perfect look. But like I said, then it's easily accessible for other people to purchase too. And if you don't own any of her minis, like you need to, you need to. I need to grab the mini gold one and then her new mini glam one. But I'm just like, I love, love, love these palettes. Then I'm gonna grab this Sephora number 15 brush and I'm gonna dig into both of these shimmer shades together and we're gonna apply it all over the lid. So I'm just gonna go into them both evenly and then plop it right onto the lid. I'm not doing it wet, just a nice dry coat because we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put another shadow right on top to really give it that 
gold, bronzy, reflecty look that I'm looking for. So all that I did with the shadow was I just pushed it right up into my crease. If you like more of a crisp look, you can definitely cut it if you'd like. I like my looks to be a little bit more on like the softer side, which is why I didn't cut the crease. But <laughs> this is my favorite part of the look. So if you guys don't own anything from Dose of Colors, which I feel like everybody at this point should or does, the Block Party eyeshadows are my favorite eyeshadows I've ever owned in the history of my collection. I call these the party eyes. This will elevate any look. So this is in the shade Heart of Gold. This is gonna give that really beautiful glitter reflectiveness that like glitter would give you without it being like glitter on the eyes. I don't like putting glitter on my eyes, like loose glitter, things like that. It's really not my thing. I like loose pigments, but that glitter not really my thing. So this will give it to me without it actually being glitter. So my favorite way to apply this is with my finger. So I will just take my middle finger and I'm just going to press this right on top of those shades. Um, I'm not trying to like completely cover it. I really want those two shades to still somewhat be noticeable. So just patting this right on top of it. It does change the color uh, a little bit, definitely, but those um, the bronzy shades underneath really do help just to bring this color even more into that bronzy feel. So then what I like to do, I'm gonna grab this MAC 217 brush and I'm just gonna lightly dip into here and I'm just gonna make sure that the crease and this glitter shade kind of come in together. This gives me that really soft flow between them. Again, I don't want it to be harsh like a cut crease. You could do that but this, I really want the glitter to just blend right into here. I don't mind putting this into the crease. I actually feel like when I do put this in the crease, it makes the look, I don't even know how to explain it, <laughs> but to me, it's just like everything. Um, you could even bring it up higher if you would like, but I just kind of push it right into the crease. If you like more of that metallic look, you could definitely wet these, but I just love the way using my finger gives that wet look on its own without me having to like spray a brush. And then I'll just kind of concentrate a little extra right in the center so that it pops a little bit more. Now it's time for the cleanup crew. A little bit of oil on a pad just to kind of wipe away the eyes to give a really nice crisp look. All right, now to move on to the face. We already have the skin prepped, so it's been sitting there for a minute, just kind of soaking into the skin. Um, Again, with my self-tanner, I wanna make sure I'm dark enough. So normally I mix my foundations, but I think I might just go in with this guy, the Hourglass Vanish. This is in light beige. It's a pretty dark color. It's actually darker than I would expect a light beige to be in any other brand, but I love, love, love this. I will say this foundation, I'm not kidding you, a little goes a long way. That is basically all that I'm going to use. I feel like if you end up using too much of that foundation, it can be very heavy, very cakey, just does not look good on the skin, so less is more. And I kind of just like drag it down onto my pan and then get my brush kind of loaded up with the pigment and then just brush it onto the skin. And now I have my entire face covered and I used up all of that little drop. There's even a little bit actually left on there but that's how much like you really don't need a lot and if you're looking for more coverage that's when you'll just go in with your concealer that to me is what concealer is meant for it's meant to just kind of take over what the foundation couldn't do so little tip for you so now i'm going to go back in with that Too faced concealer again in the color light beige and we are going to go up under the eye around the nose chin and then anywhere that i have a blemish I had clear, clear, perfect skin literally yesterday morning and then last night it was just like, nope, you're gonna go somewhere tomorrow. I'm gonna fuck you up. But that's okay, I'm not worried about it. That's why we got makeup. So now I'm just gonna take my beauty blender and I'm gonna blend all of this in. I might go in with another concealer to add a little bit more brightness throughout my T-zone. But for right now, I really just wanna focus on the coverage where I'm kinda lacking and just making sure that everything that I need to be covered is covered. All right, concealer did 
exactly what I need to do. Now I have this full coverage look without feeling heavy or cakey or anything like that. They, the foundation and the concealer really work together to give you that flawless finish and it looks great. So moving on to contouring, I'm gonna be using this Neutrogena foundation stick. This is in the shade Chestnut. So definitely a lot darker than what I would normally wear when I'm not self-tanned, but since this self-tan is super fresh, I'm gonna need the darkest one. So I'm gonna be using this refer brush in 04. This is my favorite cream brush to use like literally with any creams, but especially to contour with. And I'm just gonna dab the product into the brush. I actually just washed this brush too, so now it's about to get dirty as well. And I'm going to pack this color and then lightly swipe and blend, pack some more, blend. And I kind of just like go back and forth between doing that. I don't want to swipe too much just to make sure I'm not moving all the product underneath it. But I also want to make sure that it is blended and looks good. And I love putting cream contours down or just honestly like anything cream before I put powder because I feel like it really helps the powder to stand out a little bit more and helps to keep the longevity of it. Can't forget the nose either. So I'm just gonna take a little bit. I don't want a crazy amount, but definitely enough just to really tie in the rest of the face and the contour. And then I always just go in with my beauty blender to make sure that's blended out because I do not want two brown stripes down the side of my nose. That ain't cute. Now it's time for some setting powder. So I'm gonna take my RCMA translucent powder, put a little bit down on my pan, kind of like spread it out a little bit. I'm gonna take my beauty blender very lightly first, just like a small amount of product. I'll dab up underneath the eye on both sides. And then what I'm gonna do, kind of dab a little bit everywhere else too. Now I'm gonna go in with a little bit more powder and I'm gonna do a little bit of baking. I think baking is so necessary when you have a very, very long night out and you really don't wanna worry about your makeup. And I'm talking like 12 hours, which is basically how long I'm gonna need my makeup on for. But I don't think it's truly necessary for like a day to day if you're just kind of like running around and you have just like, you know, not as full of a face on, but definitely love to bake for times like these. And for the rest of my face, I like to set it with the Charlotte Flawless Powder. We know this, this is in shade two. I'm hitting pan guys, I need to get another one. I love these powders, but so light. Um, I don't like a full matte look. I do like more of a natural to a dewy look. So this really helps to keep that natural look to it without looking drying or too powdery because it's not my thing. So I'm a highlight before I bronze because I find sometimes when I put highlighter first and then I go and bronze my face, the highlighter looks like it's coming from within, which really gives me that like glowy that I'm looking for. Instead of sometimes people will put the highlighter on top of everything and it stands out a little bit more and sometimes it can look a little stripey. Not everybody, but sometimes it can. So I feel like this is a nice way to get that glow without feeling like it's too much. So I'm gonna go in with my Charlotte Film Star Bronze and Glow. And then I'm gonna be using my Morphe 510 brush and I'm just going to be generous with this because like I said, there's gonna be products on top of it, so it's gonna help them just to melt into each other and give that really pretty lit from within. And then I'm just gonna grab the um, contouring shade with my Japanese highlighting brush, and I'm gonna go over the areas where I put the contour down. And this is gonna be my first layer of bronzing slash contouring. Again, with me being a lot more self-tanned, I need to slowly build up the bronzeness so it looks natural and not fake. Then I'm gonna take the Butter Bronzer from Physician's Formula, and I'm gonna take this crown brush, it's C500, and I'm gonna be a little bit more generous with this and kind of blend it into the cheeks but then down into the face just to give a little bit more color. And then the neck as well, can't forget the neck. I'm always being conscious that I'm pushing that right into 
the hairline as well. But if you're blonde, it's a little bit more difficult for you, so I wouldn't necessarily do that. I wanna be a little bit more bronzy, a little bit more glowy. So my hourglass bronze, radiant bronze light. This also is hitting pan. Oh, I'm so sad. Same Japanese brush. And now I'm gonna concentrate it right through here and right on the temples and then the perimeters right on the forehead and then with this bronzer having a slight sheen to it also helps that highlighter that we put down too really blend into each other now i'm just going to dust away that powder that we had just a light i only did a little little light bake i'm not really too too heavy with it but now i'm just going to dust it away and now i'm going to take this brush right here this is from flower beauty I love this brush, but what I'm gonna do is just take a little bit of that bronzer from the Physician's Formula, and then also tap that right onto here just to kind of set that contour and make it stand out just a little bit more. Now, if you wanna look a little bit more sculpted, we got all these little steps going on here, but I swear it looks so good in your makeup last all night. I, and you, can go into the Tar Park, Avenue, Park Avenue Princess palette. Um, I love this. I love the highlighters and the bronzers. These bronzers get real dark, but what I want to do is brighten up my under eyes a little bit more. So I'm going to go in with this enhanced shade and I'm going to be using my Morphe 501 brush. And I'm just going to lightly dip into that, hit right here because I get a little bluer and I want that to be covered. And then I go along the side of the nose and that kind of helps to make the contour stand out a little bit more there too but not too much where, again, we don't want to look like we have two brown stripes down the nose, but it also helps just kind of like blend in that color as well. So now it's time for blush, and I'm so excited. Blush is like honestly becoming one of my favorite parts of my makeup recently. Everyone's like, I feel like when I'm on scrolling on Instagram, blush is really making its comeback. Like people are really, really into blush now, and it's making me way more into blush than I ever was. I've always loved blush, but you know what I mean? I don't know. It just looks amazing. So I'm going to be using this one from Juvia's Place. It's called Serafina. It is such a beautiful color, beautiful pigments. Everybody knows Juvia's Place like comes out with some of the best for the best price. I'm going to be using the refer 05 brush and just dipping into there oh, it's so pretty and then i'm going to be generous with it i'm going to tap it first and i'm just going to bring it into my contour as well but i've really been loving that baby doll look everyone's been kind of keeping it kind of close up to the eye on that apple and then bringing it outwards i've been loving that look so we're gonna continue that look. Before I set my face though, I'm just gonna cut the cheeks a little bit. That also helps just to kind of give a little extra set and then also gives that nice little chiseled look I'm looking for. So I'm just gonna pop it right here. But I don't leave that on, I just immediately go in and brush it away because I don't like it to be too harsh, but I do like that slight little brightening cleanup that it does. All right, now we're ready to set the face, so I'm gonna take this Makeup Forever Mist and Fix. As always, spray the face. Oh my God, that just like, it gets me every time. It feels so good. Jumping back to the eyes, we're gonna go ahead and line them really quick with a new liquid liner that all of you guys had recommended to me on Instagram. I'm, I'm excited to try it. This is the Physician's Formula Liquid Liner, and it's in the waterproof. First of all, the packaging of the waterproof it is seriously my favorite. I love that fake water droplet wet look. I, I don't know what it is when, I feel like Too Faced come, came out with that first. Maybe not in general, but one of the first products that I got to physically feel and touch, and I remember just falling in love with it. And so now this has that, and I just think it's so neat. Um, typically, like my favorite liquid liners would be like Kat Von D, Stila, um, the Fenty one. Those are like my go-to because of the brush style and the blackness that you get from those liners. And I feel like it's really hard sometimes in the drugstore to get that really rich, dark black. But this said it's the blackest black, so we will see on the eyes. I haven't done liquid liner in a while, so I'm, <laughs> I'm really happy to do that. I've been sticking more with those like eyeshadow wings, and I love them, but now we got this bad boy. So I'm gonna try hard not to 
talk and also not to mess it up. Okay, wow. That went on so, so easy. And I love the finish of it. It is not super shiny. It's not matte. It's like the perfect. This looks really nice. I don't think this is like the blackest, blackest liner I've ever used, but it's pretty damn close. So this is really nice. Thank you guys for recommending this to me. This is beautiful. Okay, I'm I'm literally like in shock right now. Okay, so I feel like I I feel like that literally just blew away my favorites for high end. I I can't believe it. Okay, so one big thing that I noticed that I liked this better than my high end ones. This one actually reminds me like the brush tip reminds me more of the Kat Von D. So I'm gonna compare it to the Kat Von D. When I was going over a couple spots just to make sure everything was smooth. This kept gliding and gliding and gliding. And one thing that I noticed with my Kat Von D sometimes, if I went over a spot, it would kind of catch it and not necessarily like pick like pick up product, but it would not make it smooth and it would kind of ruin it sometimes because like the liner was already dry. And But like this, I kept going over and over and over again and it was just like glide, 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 glide. And this was $8, so... I think this is gonna be my new favorite liner now. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is my lashes and brows and my hair off camera. I am gonna be doing a separate lash brow tutorial. So this is just gonna save me some more time and then we will be back to do our lips together. All right, we are back. I got my hair, brows, and lashes on. I will link below the products that I used for both of those. But now it's for the lip and I'm actually excited. I just bought this lip, I think like two, three days ago and I haven't even worn it, touched it, anything. This is from Milani. It's called I Am Pretty. They said it was new. So I'm excited. I have two other Milani lipsticks of in this particular one, the bold matte ones, and I love them. I swear, like, I compare them to the Kylie ones, but better. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and line my lips. I'm going to be using the KKW Beauty Lip Liner in shade 1.5. This is my favorite lip liner of all time. It goes good with so many lip colors. Then I'm going to put on the Milani Lipstick. I am pretty. It's in the number 05, just for a little reference. And then on top of that, I'm going to be using the Milani Keep It Full Lip Gloss in the color Champagne. And now this completes the look. Oh, I just love this bronzy moment. More makeup is seriously my absolute favorite. But you want to know one thing about this look that I've been loving the most. It's not touching my under eyes. It's like another little trend that's been going around, but I just, I'm here for it. I feel like it makes the the eye look cleaner, brighter. And don't get me wrong, like I do love a smoked out lash line, but with this, I don't know. I feel like it it allows the look to still not be like completely dramatic, but still full. Does that make sense? But now the look is finished. I'm going to go ahead and put my outfit on. I'm going to be wearing all black with this outfit, which is like my favorite thing to ever wear. If I do get pictures, I will put it in this video for you guys, but this is it. I hope you liked our little get ready and how I like to get ready for the night. Do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe to all my videos if you guys like to see more. And do not forget to follow me on Instagram. My name is Amanda Devon and that's it. I'm gonna be late if I don't stop talking. I will see you guys all in the next video. Bye.